we're at 6.05, I think we should officially begin. So again, on behalf of Upgrad Abroad, uh, wishing all of you a very warm welcome. Good evening and thank you all for joining us in. We're going to be talking about studying in the United Kingdom, studying in one of the most prestigious business schools at the UK, um, has the Keel University with, uh, I mean, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about both business and science programs at Keel. Uh, please join me welcoming Ms. Jackie McIntosh, uh, who heads ad admissions for Keele University for both undergraduate and postgraduate programs. Uh, Jackie has largely been instrumental in setting the partnership up with Upgrad for the University of Keele or Keele University as we call it. Uh, prior to calling Jackie to speak about the university, to speak about ourselves, to introduce us. I just wanted to apprise you of what really is the Keele University like. So Keele University has been consecutively ranked number one for its campus infrastructure, for student satisfaction, for its employability services. Um, it has students studying in the UK from over 162 different countries in the world. Um, number three in the UK for some of its uh, graduate business programs and has a 96% employability rate if you're a Keele graduate. So it's one of the most prestigious universities in the UK. And I think I'm very honored to be speaking to Jackie. Uh, would now love to call her upon and in introduce herself and Keele University for you guys. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming and um, listening to me. So yes, I'm Jackie McIntosh and I work at Keele University and I am responsible for recruiting students from the India market come to study at Keele. So I'm happy to take any of your questions today. Um, so in terms of Keele, I can just give you a, a quick overview if, if that's what you want. So in terms of Keele, um, you can see there's a little picture behind me of uh, this is part of the campus. This is Keele Hall and the campus is built around um, this building. This building has been there since, I don't know, like the 15th century or something like that. It's been there a long time. Um, but the university itself, we've been around just over 70 years. And as um, Pranit was talking about, we are very much well-renowned when it comes to the, the research and the student outcomes, the, the quality of our teaching, um, especially within the business school and the computer um, science courses as well. Um, it's very much a campus-based university um, and it's such a community feel on the campus. It's a huge campus, lots of space for students to kind of focus and to study. And it's just beautiful as well. So you can take woodland walks with lots of rabbits, there's lots of squirrels running around. So it's a beautiful environment in which for you to study. Um, and so even though it's such a huge campus, it still has that community feel on there. So everyone knows each other, everyone looks at each other, everyone's very friendly, very welcoming, and we do have a lots of international students on campus as well. So you will have that international experience for sure. So thrilling to know. Uh, at this point, I also want to introduce what Upgrad is doing with Kiel. So I'm sure you all know what Upgrad is. We're a higher educational organization, largely a platform that is making education across the world more accessible, more affordable, more democratized, trying to bring some of the most top quality institutes of academic excellence across the world, more easier for you guys to be admitted into, more easier for you guys to start your academic journeys with, more easier for you guys to afford. One of our partners, esteemed partners, is University of Kiel, with which we're trying to pioneer a program in which you can start in India for the first year, earn enough credits in India, studying with Upgrad, and then you have a literal entry directly into the second year at Keele University's business programs and some of the science programs for the School of Computing and Mathematics. So you start in India, you earn a full year of credits for either business or science programs. And at Keel Business School, you then take up different courses like accounting, finance, marketing and management, international business, HR management. So Keel gives you that extra liberty of entering straight into the year two. Along with that, we're also making sure that you can take up some of the direct programs at Keel that start right after school. And uh, Jackie would be more than happy to talk about both of them. While the advanced credit courses are going to help you cut down the cost by almost 10 to 15 lakhs of Indian rupees, uh, we can definitely ensure that when you apply for direct 
applications to peel your applications are facilitated by us in, a, in the most seamless manner that we can possibly um, be doing them. Uh, Jackie, at this point, I'd love to ask you, for those of students who are still making their mind on which country in the world do they actually want to invest in when it comes to higher education, why should they be picking United Kingdom? Yeah, good question. Yeah, we get asked that all the time. So with the with the UK, it's I mean, it's long established the relationship between India and the UK. Lots of Indian students do come uh, to the UK. I think the numbers are rising, increasing each year. So with the UK, it's not too far from India. Um, big Indian communities within the UK. So you will feel quite comfortable um, in the environment and I know a lot of people have family here as well so it's you know it's a, it's a good choice but in terms of studying in the UK the degree that you will get is a, is a quality degree prestigious degree and you can use that anywhere in the world and and I, and I think also the way you are taught in the UK is a lot different to how you're taught in other countries um, we very much focus on as well as a theory, there's lots of practical elements and lots of uh, work placement elements as well within most of the courses. And when we do teach um, students at, in the UK, we all, we're, we're not just teaching you that the course and the subject, we're teaching you for the next step in your career, in your life, so that when you leave university, you are well equipped then um, to find Korea will help you to do that. You'll get support all the way. All the universities in the UK will help you with that if that's what you want to do. But we do everything that we are taught in the classroom, you can relate it to outside as well, but after you graduate. So that's one of the most uh, key elements. And I think that's a little bit different to, to other universities. Right, Jackie. Uh, my follow up to that is. What are some of the courses or what are some of the thriving industries in the UK? So what happens most of the times is that students are very clear that they want to be studying in the UK. Of course, UK being the temple of education. But the point is that most of them are not clear as in which courses should they be opting for that can guarantee their chances at uh, success after university. So what are some of the most thriving industries in the UK and which courses does Kiel have to ensure that they can enter into those industries yeah. um one thing to know is when, when you do study a, a degree or a master's um with employers in the uk they're not necessarily looking at the subject that you are studying yes it's more specific if you're going into like that one of the health professions obviously you have to have studied that um but if you're looking at something like business, you can relate that to pretty much anything within like different careers. So my advice wouldn't be to kind of narrow your focus into kind of one specific area uh, because you, you have so much choice uh, in terms of the subject. So what UK employers are looking at is when you were studying and doing your degree, what else did you do? Um, not just about the grades. Yes, you can get a first or a two, one or two, two. Uh, they're not going to not employ you because you get a 2-2 and not a first. Um, but it's kind of all the other things that you did. You joined student unions, you were part of teams, you were on a debate team. So that's the sort of things they're looking for as well. What kind of qualities, what skills, soft skills did you learn? And you're also learning things like leadership, um, teamwork. You're, you're learning all of that at the same time as you're, as you're studying um, your core subject. So I wouldn't focus too much on the subject unless it's something if you're going into something really specific i know a lot of students will go to uh, like business degrees but with the business degree you can go on to do other things <clears throat> and management degrees you can go on to do other things because it's different industries management is management you can take that into pretty much every industry so um and i think with our degrees as well you, it kind of gives you that broad outlook as well so it, it's um i think it's really good not to just you know focus on one thing like i, I want business because i want to go into business fair enough if you want to um, start your own business then we have lots of entrepreneurial courses that you could do um so in terms of the courses that we offer we offer a whole range management business 
HRM, economics, finance, again, there's so much choice. And especially at the undergraduate level, you're then able to mix and match those um, courses as well. You can maybe do a business with psychology, for example, or business with computer science. So there's lots of lots of um, different course options for you to do. Um, maybe too many, and I think it's quite confusing for students because they've got too much choice. But you might have, yes, business, but then you also want to interested in the psychology of business. So then you study business and psychology. And what that does is gives you a broader degree and you can do a lot more uh, with it as well. I, I absolutely love that idea. So, so you're saying these students can pursue something that they're extremely passionate about, but also pick up something that, that's extremely employable, right? So business and psychology is a great choice. Uh, I also had the good fortune of seeing that you had courses that had computer science and astrophysics, computer science and neuroscience. That was absolutely brilliant. I think yeah. for, for any learner, picking up computer science is not a difficult option, but the, the choice of studying neuroscience or astrophysics with it is brilliant. I think these are some of the softer aspects that make you choose uh, universities outside India, I think the, the amount of flexibility, the amount of choice making, the, the, the amount of democratized education that we receive outside India is, is absolutely brilliant. Uh, yeah. While all of this stands true, I think I also want all the learners to know that uh, Keele University will normally cost you about 40 to 42 thousand pounds for three years of degree uh, for a direct admission if you're making one. I think Jackie can sort of help me there if I made a, a, a mistake. But, but with the upgrad uh, setting that you have, that you complete first year of credits in India, and then you pursue the rest of the two years of course credits at Keele campus. By the end of one year, one year a lot more clearer about which subjects to pick, which specialized studies do you want to pick up? Like Jackie mentioned, you also a lot more clearer on what choice making do you want to be doing? What additional subjects do you want to pick up? Well, the first year is going to be pretty foundational. So with that, you almost save about close to 12,000 pounds. So what happens is instead of paying about 40,000 pounds for three years, you, you barely paid about close to about 28 to 30,000 pounds. So you're able to save all of the money while staying in India. And also, uh, Keele University has been so uh, generous that they've been able to allow all of you guys, if you start in India, to switch between different courses prior to you transitioning to Keele. So you can take up either marketing and media or HR management and business or accounting and finance. So there are about seven, eight different courses uh, from the entire list of Keele Business School's courses that you can actually get into. So I'm saying that's an additional flexibility that we give you. Uh, but of course, you can always browse through Keele University's website, pick up any course that you like. You reach out to us and we'll help you put your application through Keele University. Jackie, uh, at this point, would love for you to correct me if I mentioned the fee wrong, please. Yeah, so the fees um, range from, I think some of the um, humanities courses will start around the 16,000 mark and it goes right up to 24,000 for the health sciences. So there's quite a range of courses there. If you look at computer science courses, they're around maybe 17,000, 17 and a half thousand. And the business school is around 18,000, something like that. Right, so uh, all in all, with Upgrad, if they're spending that one year of additional credits, they're going to be spending about 18,000 pounds for the last two years per year. So that's 26,000 pounds plus. So more or less, they're able to at least save close to 15,500 pounds if you skip that. You're not skipping the year, you're just pursuing some of the advanced credits that give you an advanced standing a literal entry into the Keele Business School or the School of Computing and Mathematics. Absolutely brilliant. I think uh, we always missed that chance while we were, you know, moving out of school. Uh, we had to pay the entire fee or we had to call it, uh, you know, we, we had to call off the plan. We had to look at doing a PG degree abroad. But, but I think now that 
private universities, Jackie, in India have been charging so much of extraordinary amount of fee. So the fee here is close to about, uh, let's say eight and a half lakhs, uh, which is about 8,500 to 9,000 pounds uh, um, a year for an Indian private university. I think if we're looking at Kiel standing in the world and we're comparing that to any Indian private universities, of course, Kiel is miles ahead. Uh, also at this point, I want everybody to know that in my experience, I think one of the largest bottlenecks of an Indian undergraduation system is the lack of research infrastructure, is the lack of that research uh, habit, that ethic. Um, and if you're looking at Keele University, 97% of what happens at Keele as research is world leading in terms of how much it is cited across the world. And I think that's primarily why Indian universities sometimes don't rank so high because your rankings depend a lot on research. And so I'm sure all of you want to be a part of an educational ecosystem where the research happening in your campus is world leading. I think I'd let Jackie talk more about the research at Kiel. Uh, how are students taken through that entire uh, cultural component of having research as a major part of your academia? Yeah, just to say that with, with, the, with our research, we see that on, on the same level as the teaching. And the universities in the UK are all being ranked gold, silver or bronze in terms of the research and the and the teaching and we have been we've got the gold uh we've been allocated the gold so it just that just shows that it's the quality of the research and the training and also to say yes the, the research you go to the website and look at all the research that the, the guys are out there doing it's fantastic work and these guys are actually in the classroom teaching you um, I know some universities in the UK will have PhD students that are teachers. We don't have any PhD students. All of our teachers are those out there doing the, um, the research, that cutting edge research. And what they also do is bring that into the classroom as well. And there's lots of opportunities for you to be involved in some of the research projects if you show interest as well. All the students will be given um, a personal tutor once they arrive and that person if you have um, a particular a particular focus and something that you want to do a little bit more research about you speak to your personal tutor and they'll put a plan into action in terms of how you can start and do that research if you wanted to so there's lots of opportunities for you to get involved and also you can do like research projects, you can do like these short projects as well. So, the, so pretty much the teaching and the research is hand in hand. And there's also um, some modules that you can choose if you wanted to do focus a little bit more research and you know you wanna do a PhD in the end, you can start at, this, um, start at this level and then each year just add some research modules to your course and then that way you experience so by the time you come to do your PhD you are well versed in how to do the research how to start um, but yeah some of the research please go to our website have a look at the research there's some of them is really really interesting subjects that we get involved with and they're all and the researchers are always on the BBC news or somewhere talking about their research and some of the stuff that they do absolutely okay uh, Jackie would love for you to talk some uh, where about uh, how much scholarships can be given to Indian students? What is the scholarship criteria at Kiel? And how can they avail and how soon can they apply for scholarships? So, okay, so with Kiel, we do have scholarships available for international students. Of the undergraduate level, we offer £2,500 per year off your tuition fee. All you need to do is exceed the entry requirement. Uh, if you're thinking about class 12, it's usually around 70, 75% that we're looking for. So all you need to do is get 1% over, then automatically you've got the 2,500. There's no application process. You don't apply for it. It's not competitive. It's purely based on your grades. So as soon as you exceed the, the requirements, admissions will see that on your application, and then they will actually add the scholarship amount to your offer letter. So you already know when you get your offer letter, how much scholarship that you, you will get. So that's 2,500. The other one we have, we call it developing countries, but all Indian students are eligible for this. So regardless, 
uh, it's purely on nationality, uh, an extra £1,000 per year. So at the undergraduate le level, you're looking at £3,500 off your tuition fee per year. No application, <laughs> automatic. Yeah. Uh, Jack, you were mentioning the option of placement there, right? Uh, would I mean, as much as I love that concept, I think a lot of students in India don't really understand what placement here is. So supposedly there's okay. an who comes to Kiel University for three years of their bachelor's degree, when does the placement there begin? How is it conceptualized? How much do they earn? And, and how, are they, <laughs> yeah. how are they at an edge over any other learner who's not had that option anywhere across the world? So, okay, yeah, placement year, very popular. So what happens with the, on the undergraduate level, you do your placement year in between year two and year three. In the first year, obviously, you're just learning, you're doing all the, the foundation stuff. And in the second year, um, you make your decision. Do I want to do a placement year? It's not mandatory. It's totally up to you as a student. You choose whether you want to do that or not. If you decide, yes, you want to do that placement year, then we have placement officers within the faculties. You go and speak to them and they try and match you up with a, um, a company that they think of interest to you. So you might be something that's quite specific. You might already have a company in mind that you want to work at, but they will help you and support you all the way through until you um, secure your placements. Note that the placements are not uh, guaranteed. It purely depends on whether we can find the right placement for you. And also um, there is an interview attached. So it depends on how well you do interview. But again, don't worry about the interview because in your first and second year, we have lots of workshops um, working with the careers and employability team and they can help you with interview techniques, how to get your CV together. So they get you in a position. So once you do come to apply for your placement, you have everything prepared and you are prepared as a person to actually go forward um, and to find your placement. So with the placements, yes, they are paid and usually at minimum rate, I'm not sure, I think it's like probably eight, nine pounds per hour within the within the UK, but it's still a good wage for the for, for the age of because you'll be like 18, 19 then. So it's a really good wage. And majority of students at that age, that is what they're earning um, in their work. Um, yeah, so you, you get paid for that one year, but then when you finish uh, that placement year, then you obviously as part of assessment, you have to do a, a written report about your placement, what you've learned and, and, and you know, everything and reflect on that. What the, a good thing is about this, if you know you wanted to stay and work in the UK after you graduate, then you've already got one year UK work experience. So and that will go on your CV and that will definitely help you in terms of when you're applying for a course, uh, sorry, applying for a job. But also if you do a good job in that year and that company likes you, they will offer you the job. They will say to you, finish your final year at um, university and then come and work for us. So it's, so it's a really good way of securing a job in the UK if you wanted to stay and also getting that experience as well, getting that um, year's experience as well. So Most of the courses will come with a placement year as well, especially the ones that we're offering as part of the um, agreement with Upgrad. Um, but just check the website just to make sure that your course does come with a place. Right, so, so they finish the first two years of the studies and then they go for about 48 weeks for a placement there and then they come back on campus. Yeah, so a full year. Yeah, and then come back and, and finish that final year. Is that and that and also, just to note as well, with the student visa, um, students can only work 20 hours per week as well week. with the student visa. So uh, as, as, as much as I remember, I think they have a good potentiality to earn about 36,000 pounds almost. If he, I mean, they can earn about 2,500 to 3,000 pounds a month, which is a good enough uh, amount for you guys uh, to be making. I think probably that. Uh, so by what I feel is that even your placement there comes to you for free. So you're not really spending, you, you're earning as much as, uh, you need to survive through that year, probably a lot more 
And that, like Jackie mentioned, you have an additional one year of work experience, which is definitely going to help you get a good job, which was also going to definitely help you uh, stay ahead of the curve when you finally um, are done with your education and are looking to, to, to find a great job in the UK and ultimately, for, you know, sort of wanting to build a career in the UK. Uh, with that, I think uh, also wanted to know, Jackie, how much of post-study work visa length do they actually uh, get after they finish it? So, so, so what's the length of that post-study work visa? Yes, so at the moment it's two years. So you've got two years uh, you have to apply for that visa whilst you're in the UK after you've graduated. You have to prove that you graduated with your certificate or grades. And then when you apply for that within the UK, if, you've left, if you leave the UK after you uh, finish your studies, you won't be eligible to apply for it. So make sure you stay and apply for it uh, whilst you're in the UK. With your visa, they usually give you, um, I think it's two or three months after you finish anyway. So you have that time then to actually um, apply for your visa, your graduate immigration visa and um, secure that. So that's two years you will get. If you find a job within those two years, um, some companies will be able to sponsor you and then you can change your visa to a working visa. Um, but just bear in mind, if you don't find a job within those two years, then you would have to uh, maybe come back to India. But um, because this is quite new, I think this is the second year, we, we're not sure about like the statistics, whether, you know, who found a job, who didn't. But um, just to say it's the help and support is there um, from all of the universities, especially at Kiel, if you do want to stay and work in the UK after you um, graduate, for sure. Kiel has a fantastic employability rate. They've got 96% uh, graduate employability, uh, which is normally a metric that uh, is measured from uh, in six months after you know, a batch rolls out and they're graduated, uh, which is brilliant, I think, which should be one of the highest in the UK. So if you plan to go to the UK, if you plan to get a job in the UK, if you plan to build a career in the UK, Kiel should be hands down your choice. I think at this point, Jackie, I really want us through some of the courses that are there at Kiel that are articulated to our first year of advanced credits. Oh, I don't. Sorry, I don't have that list in front of me. And I know it's, um, it's a lot of the business courses. Um, I think maybe economics. I'm not sure. HR, HRM. Well, just uh, yeah. I think would love to share. Would love to share, love to share that. Uh, that so great a few management courses and then we've got both science courses as well we've got computer science and ds uh, a bsc in data science and a bsc in computer science and we've got management courses as well at keel university uh, all of these are articulated to the advanced credits in business and management or the advanced credits um, uh, for technology uh, if you just give me a minute i'll just sort of um, pull up my screen and would love to show you what are the courses that are there. Uh, doing it right away. And also just to note that if you are coming uh, on that route, um, you, you are eligible to apply for a placement year. So you'd come for in, within the second year. And if you know you want a placement year, you let it be known, you apply for it and then throughout that second year, we'll be helping you to get a placement if that's what you really want. So. Absolutely. Uh, just for you guys to know, if you're very well researched, if you're very well informed, the placement year works, uh, it's absolutely similar, like you have co-op in Canada. So for two years, you're studying, and then for a year, you leave the campus, you work full-time, you work in a relevant field like the CPT in, in, in the U.S., uh, you work in a relevant field, you gain that industrial experience, you put your classroom learning to a good use, and then you finally come back to campus uh, more aware, more informed, uh, more articulate, more uh, mindful about what subjects you actually want to specialize further in, what is it that you are extremely great at, and what is it that you want to finally pick as a good career option, like Jackie mentioned, is one of the best ways to, you know, work for an employer that can 
absolutely give you a potential employment after you're done with your degree. So you have to be very careful with which employers you, you are applying to working with. Uh, it, it, of course, depends on how skilled you are, how experienced you are, how, how well you've been able to project yourself to the employer during the placement. Yeah, but those guys are potentially your future employers. So if placement year is done fine, you're at an edge, you're way ahead of the curve. Uh, Jackie, I just want you to walk them through some of these courses. I have put them up, I pulled them up for you. So to cover my portion, so uh, at Upgrad, we're affiliated as per the UGC norms to so Chandigarh University and Jain University. The two universities deliver the curriculum for first year. The credits that you get for, these for, for the first year of curriculum delivery is recognized by Kiel University. So there's a credit recognition that goes, which gets you literal entry into the KBS, the Kiel Business School Bachelor Program, uh, or gets you, so after this, I also pull up the School of Computing and Mathematics programs that are there with Kiel. Uh, Jackie, you can walk them through some of these and meanwhile, I'll open the science programs. I think the main thing um, to say with this, because these are all Kiel Business School courses, is um, the Kiel Business School itself is um, not just, it's not just there for the learning and the teaching space. They've also got businesses in the same building like companies. A lot of these are startup companies. And if you're studying in the Kiel Business School, you've got access to these companies and these people. There's a coffee shop on the ground floor you can grab a meeting if, if you see a company and it's of interest to you, maybe they're doing something that you're interested in. Um, you can you have the opportunity to meet with them, talk about how they got started. They can give you ideas, especially if you want to set up your own business, if you want to be an entrepreneur, they can help you with that as well. So, so a lot of the courses are also accredited, um, like the accounting ones will be ACCA accredited. Um, with the international business, programs, the business management type programs, they're all number one in the UK at the undergraduate level. So you do get some really good quality courses. And if you look at the, the, the best thing I could say to you is go to the website and look at the different modules because there's so much different choices that you can do. You can kind of mix and match the modules. So it's quite flexible in terms of our offerings. Um, as I mentioned before, yes, you can do um, business with HRM and you can do marketing if you wanted to with business as well. So you've got some of the marketing modules, you've got some of the business modules um, and it's, it just makes it a lot more interesting as well. And a lot of the courses are very much uh, practical elements as well. It's not just you're not just sat in a classroom listening to a teacher every day. You're out there doing some projects you can do some little bit of research um, and get that practical experience I think they have like the, the Bloomberg suite like you can do stock um, stocks um, buying and selling and there's lots of little things like that so there's lots of different uh, hands-on activities as well uh, in the in the classroom um, with the it, within the Kill Business School when I mentioned that all the businesses are there you can maybe do a, a work placement with one of these companies. It just depends on the size of the company. Some of them are small like startups and uh, we offer that business support to them. So some of the companies will come to the business school and ask for maybe um, a business solution. They're having these particular issues. They put that out to the students. The students work in groups and try and resolve the issue of the company. And the co company usually pays thousand pounds, 2000 pounds, or you get a gift if you can solve that issue for that company. And, um, and they take that on board and they use it. So there's so many like different types, those types of opportunities within um, these courses. So yeah, so go to the website, have a look at the actual modules and specifics and see what is of interest to you. Um, so we're offering computer science, data science as well uh, for the Chandigarh students. With the computer science and the data science, at this level, um, you can already choose what you want to study. For example, you can study computer science and AI, computer science with um, network security. Uh, robotics, games. So you can already decide if you know you want to go into gaming, for example, then those are the modules you choose as part of your 
in the computer science program. And then at the master's level, then there's more um, specialized tailored um, programs for you uh, at that level. But with the computer science program, it's a little bit different um, compared to other UK universities because they're pretty much generic. It's just computer science. Whereas with ours, you can actually specialize at an early stage. So that's one of our USPs in terms of our computer and data science programs at that level. Just, just wanted to walk through some of the options that they have uh, you know, to choose a subject complementary to computer science. Just wanted to share my screen and just show them. Uh, one, one of Keele University's unique proposition for adding value is the amount of choice making they have. So you can study DS and astrophysics you can study biology in DS, you can study business in DS, you can study DS and human biology, DS and neuroscience, DS and physics. I think there's no university I have seen uh, in my life who gives you that extensive field of options. Astrophysics in DS is brilliant. I mean, astrophysics itself is a niche. And it's not something that universities are willing to offer you. Uh, Likewise, I'll take you through the computer science programs as well. And what are the other options like Jackie mentioned? Uh, Jackie, so if they have to pick up one of these electives or one of the specialized areas, how long does the degree become eventually? No, it's, it doesn't change the length of the degree. It, all it means is within the three years or the two years uh, that they're studying, they're choosing modules specific to that pathway that they're looking at. So these are... These are some of the combined options um, for these are for the students that are coming for the full three years. Um, but if you look, I think if you first scroll further down, there might be the computer science options. Yeah, so these are the different options. And all that means is, for example, if you choose the computer science with AI, all the modules that you're studying, you'll choose the AI modules. So then when you're, so your degree will be a little bit different from. Uh, another uh, student that's studying games, for example, you're doing different modules. Uh, so that's all it means. It's not going to increase the length of the um, program. It's still three years, but you're choosing specific specialized modules. So any again, sorry, please sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, and like I said, at this level, uh, very few universities, if any, offer this type of specialization. Mm -hmm. They're usually quite generic, just computer science. And it's quite generic, but with this, you can actually start to specialize at an earlier age. Just wanted to ask you, Jackie. So, if there's anybody who's completed the advanced credits in India, comes to you in the second year, they still have the choice of uh, selecting AI or cybersecurity or games or software engineering or web and app development. Yes, they will have all. As far of as I'm aware, yeah, as far as I'm aware, yes, because it's 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 mostly about the modules um, that your right. students are going to be doing. And and for, for these options, if they have to select anyway, that, so this is an additional year, which is the fourth year, if they continue, is it? No. No. So the ones that you're looking at, at the top there, the computer science and astrophysics, for example, these are, the, these are all three-year courses, but all, this, all I'm saying with, with these is these are not mapped for the advanced. Or, yeah. Got that. Got that. Got that. Only, only the computer science and the data science courses. So these are the combinations are for students that are coming for three years at Kiel. But if you're coming Kiel, for the two years, yeah. So if you're coming for the two years via upgrad, then you've only got the computer science or the data science. That's what I was trying to say, sorry. Absolutely, no, I get the point. Uh, Jackie would love to take up some questions from the students. So Aditya, since it's a webinar intensively focused on undergraduate pro programs, what Jackie recommended should be the best thing to do. You go to the Kiel website, <laughs> I'll put down my email address here. Uh, you choose which master's program is the one for you. And we can put you across to the Kiel team for any program that Kiel has to offer. So I am putting down. Uh, so Kiel is an international university. Any student from across the world, we normally have about services in about 70 countries in the world. So we've got 2 million students starting with us, Jackie, from about 70 countries in the world. Uh, we'd love for even non-Indian students to definitely yeah. send us their requests and we would apply. A key, like I mentioned, is pretty diverse. They've got students from 162 countries in the world. Uh, wow. So we would love for you guys to send us your applications, choose the right course, and we could definitely take you through. 
the application process. Uh, Jackie, uh, I'm, I've just invited all the attendees to ask us any questions that they have, but some of them did ask us and did submit some of the questions that they wanted you to answer. I'm just pulling them up and I will take them with you in a second, please. So uh, the eligibility requirements being one. So we need 70%, like Jackie mentioned, your grade 12. IELTS has to be a mandate, but it can be completed over in one year. So as soon as you start enrolling yourself in the advanced credits, you get one year to get your IELTS. Uh, Jackie will exactly give us the figure of how much IELTS does she need before you transition to Kiel campus. Right. So on that as well, um, you can also, we also accept class 12 English. Ah. So as the class 12 English just needs to be above 70% for the national boards like CBSC and CIC. Uh, if you're doing a state board, then it's got to be over 75%. So we do accept class 12 English. There's a couple of boards that we don't accept, like Punjab, Haryana, we don't accept the English, those students will have to do IELTS or PTE or TOEFL, yeah? Um, if you get a low grade in your English at class 12, then yes, you do IELTS, you can do PTE academic, or you can do the TOEFL. And with the TOEFL, there's also the home edition as well. In terms of IELTS at this, at this level, we're looking at IELTS 6 overall and minimum 5.5 in each of the subtests or the equivalent, which is PTE or uh, TOEFL. And also to note with class 12, it has to be less than five years old as well, because class 12 English needs to be less than five years old. So that will save you a lot of money and time in terms of IELTS, we can accept your class 12. And if you're coming from other countries as well, like you mentioned, 162 countries, then it might be similar in those specific countries that we might accept those English requirements from that local English requirement. Well, six with no minimum than 5.5 .5 in each of the bands, yes? Yeah, six but, overall, 5.5, .5, yeah, minimum. Correct. Absolutely. And if they've started their class 12, uh, they need 75% in their linguistics uh, for a state. For a state board, yeah. And then 70% for CBSE and CIC. Yes, absolutely fine. Uh, at this point, I want to jump in and ask you uh, the return on investment. I think so. Whenever, as an Indian student com community, we're looking at the, the uh, amount of expense that we're going to be having when we um, are making up our mind for education, yeah. you know, how much are we going to be getting back in the first year? So, like I mentioned, you know, when 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 you study at Kiel with us, you're spending close to about uh, a little over 35 lakhs in three years, about 30, 35 to 36 lakhs. And so uh, what are some of the early salaries that they get in year one? So as soon as they're placed after they complete the graduation, how much are they earning in the UK? I think um, depending on what type of job, I think it, it, it kind of depends. So. I think at that age, like 21, 22 year olds, are probably around 20, maybe 23, 24, 25,000 per year. So you, so whatever you spend, you probably get that in maybe back in about a year and a half, something like that. Um, but it does depend on what type of industry that you go into in terms of what you get paid. How much would the salary be if they're in technology, if they've studied CS or DS, how, how much are they expected to be earning? As yeah, that's uh, again. I, I, yeah, hard for me to tell. I I really don't know the industry enough to say that. But I I reckon maybe definitely twenties could be could be late twenties, twenty thousands. Not sure. Yeah, you'd have to Google that and do some research. I think if they're above the entry requirements, they're getting twenty five hundred pounds of scholarship every year. Plus, if they're year. then there's an additional one thousand pounds of scholarship. So about thirty five hundred is is reduced from the fee every year. Yes. Correct, correct. They're spending close to Jackie about 31 and a half lakhs with our fee, which is two and a half lakhs for the entire year of credits that they earn. So 31 lakhs they're spending and yours, and with a 25 to 30,000 pound salary in the first year, 
they were almost making as much as they spend in a year and a few months. So that, 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 that's brilliant. I think if you juxtapose it with an Indian private university, we need a postgraduate degree, Jackie, to even step past 12 lakhs a year. So even if you earn one lakh a year in India, that's brilliant. It's brilliant, right? So uh, that way, I think for the return on investment part, I think it, it makes a lot more sense. You've got the placement there. You've got 100% return return on investment between 12 to 15 months. And you have a two-year additional work uh, visa, which you're saying that if your employer sponsor you, your student visa, your, your PSW gets transferred to a work visa, and then you can stay for the UK for longer. So how how frequently do you have to be sponsored by a UK employer to keep extending your visa, Jackie? I'm not sure. That's a visa UK VI question that I'm, I'm not able to answer, unfortunately. Um, I, I, I think there are set criteria in terms of the companies and uh, how the companies and why the companies sponsor you. I think the, the, the companies have to give like a, a good business case uh, to why they are employing you and also how long that sponsorship lasts for. I'm, I'm not sure, yeah, whether it's two years, three years, yeah. Uh, yeah, you put, it's probably another thing to research as well, I think. Uh, uh, so we've got somebody asking us that can a student study while he's earning? Uh, so so, so you, you mentioned the part-time wages for a student is about eight yeah. to nine pounds, and they can work 20 hours a week, yes? Correct, yeah, right. correct. So on the student visa, you're only allowed to work up to 20 hours per week. Most students work, I reckon about 90% of students do work while they're studying, um, whether it's on campus or off campus. There's lots of jobs, local jobs around uh, that students are working. At. What sort of jobs are there, Jackie? So if I am studying at Kiel, I'm studying computer science at Kiel, what sort of jobs am I going to be getting uh, in the first two years? So, sorry, in the first, oh, while you're studying, are you talking about while you're studying? Yes. Um, so students don't necessarily have the jobs that are related to their degrees, you know, whilst they're working for that, that part, those part timers. Lots of the students will be working in restaurants, uh, bars, um, um, on campus. That the can be also be working in the restaurants and the bars on campus. They can also do like some of the media students will get involved with social media. And for example, in our team, our international team, we have a social media student and she does all of our posting, all of our social media stuff. And we pay her for that. So there's lots of those types of opportunities uh, on the campus. There's student ambassadors where if we have events on campus, you can come and help give campus tours, show people around. There's so many different types of jobs, but it's not necessarily related at that time to your degree. It's more about getting that work experience and the UK work experience. And finally, Jackie, how much of gap years are we willing to accept at Kiel? So if they graduated the high school, let's say in 2017, which is about five years of gap now, do we take them? It depends. Um, it's very much a case by case basis. So it just depends on uh, what that person has been doing in those five years. If they have been working, then yeah, that's fantastic. But if they haven't been doing anything and not really engaged, then we're, we're, less, um, we're less able to take those, those students on. But if you can show that you've been working in those five years, then yeah, we will we'll definitely be considered. Yeah, what we usually publish is um, a two year gap, but um, like I said, it is on a case by case basis because it really does depend on what the student has been doing in those gap years. Uh, we've got one more question for you, Jackie. How much are the living expenses like? What, what does it cost to stay at Staffordshire or Keel Camp? So what we quote is what the UK government guidance, which is just over a thousand pounds per month um, per, for the year that you're studying. That includes like accommodation, food, clothing, you know, everything. Um, living in the Keel and that Keel area, because we're away from London, the cost of living is a lot better. Uh, we won awards in terms of affordability, like student affordability awards, because everything's quite cheap. And then you've also got 
for students, things are subsidised. It's a little bit cheaper because student, if you've got your student card, you can get things a lot, a lot cheaper as well. So it kind of depends on lifestyle. So some students will spend less than that, maybe 600. Some will spend 1500 because maybe they're out partying every, every week or whatever. So it kind of just depends on your lifestyle. Um, but the cost of living is a lot cheaper the further north you go in the in the UK. I know a lot of students want to go and live in London, but London is very, very expensive to live. Um, so the for, for example, the, the government say you need an, an additional maybe £500 per month if you're going to live in London. So, yeah, so you do get the value for money uh, being um, in the location that we are. We're right in the middle of the UK. So to answer that, yes, your part-time work can pretty much cover your living expenses. Uh, Jackie mentions that because you're living away from London, you are actually um, capable uh, and, and have a better opportunity to spend lesser, save more. Um, the goods available to you are going to be cheaper. The rents are going to be lesser. Uh, the transportation costs, Jackie mentioned, that with your student card is going to be a lot more relaxed. Um, and so that definitely helps you. But, but I think living costs has a lot to do uh, subject to your your lifestyle, right? So the more... Uh, the more yeah. <laughs> but, but but also to add to that sorry just to add to that when you apply for your student visa you do already have to show that you, you can survive for that year if you don't get a job so when you do get that job in the UK it's not about surviving it's, it's just extra additional money because you already have to show that you can survive um, for that year in the UK without work if that makes sense so for the visa, they have to give you uh, a proof of the of, of, of one year of living costs. I mean, funds equivalent. Right. Plus, the, they, they're also supposed to pay the complete year's fee or one semester fee? Um, so you, you can choose to do it. You can pay up front for the one full year, or you can pay in two installments, 50% uh, before each of the semesters. So you can do it in two, two payments if you want. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've been able to answer almost everything. Just to mention the eligibility criteria, and again, so with the regular program, you need seventy to seventy-five percent of your marks in your class twelfth. Uh, and when it comes to the upgrade program, where you're spending advanced credits of one year, uh, you, you need a seventy percent mark uh, grade in class twelfth, or seventy percent marks uh, plus you need a 5.5 gpa in your semester one and two in order to transition to keel and you should be successful in clearing all your exams uh, that being said the scholarship is limited uh, to those who can uh, exceed the el el eligibility requirements. Of course, if you're hailing from India, an additional scholarship of 1,000 pounds is available for you. Uh, that brings down your entire cost of education with upgrad. Um, and when you're studying at Keele University and you're completing your full degree at Keele, Keele, Keele University, down to about 31 lakhs, right? That's uh, the summary of, of course. The living costs are additional and that can be pretty much covered with your part-time work. Uh, for the visa, you need you can pay a, a full year of fee up front to Keele University, or you can pay semester wise. Plus, you have to show the living uh, you have to show funds equivalent to living costs, which is a thousand pounds as per the UK government per month. So, twelve thousand uh, pounds have to be in your account. Plus, uh, you know, fee has to be paid, and you have to apply for UK uh, students with gap years up to. Two years are more than welcome, but if you've got a longer gap, as long as you can explain the study gap, um, your case can be looked at. If you're working, that makes sense. Uh, if there is anything else that you guys want to ask me at this point, would love to answer that. I have put down my email for anybody who has questions regarding specific programs at Keel. Jackie and I recommend that you go to Keel's website. You select the pro programs of your interest, reach out to us, 
I will put your application through to Jackie uh, and she will take good care of you. I am absolutely certain about that. Uh, anything else, Jackie, that you may want to mention, which I've forgotten? At what point do they need the SOP, Jackie? So in terms of application, we need all of like transcripts, grades, all of that, proof of English, uh, the SOP, uh, CV, if, if you've been working, uh, and academic reference as well, um, and things like passport and some of the stuff. So yeah, you, you do have to send the SOP on application. Absolutely, I think we'd be able to answer everything. Wishing you guys all the best. Thank you for having joined in, uh, Jackie and I. Thank are, you. Do have addressed your concerns? I think Keem is one of the best decisions you can make. It's a complete package. The placement here is cherry on the top, uh, and I'm sure you're going to be doing absolutely brilliant um, at you know doing your journey at Keem. Right, Jackie. Thank you so much for having joined in. No worries. Thank you for having me. It's been a great session. So I hope it was useful for some of your students today. Thank you so much. Hope to I, see some of you at Kiel. I do have one final thing to ask of you, Jackie. Uh, I always refer to this as a chicken and egg uh, thing, which I ask all my guest speakers. If you're looking at studying abroad, should you be starting with a UG or a PG? I think most of us in India are super confused about that step. Uh, so for those of us still deliberating, still contemplating, what do you su suggest if you want to build a fortified life in the UK? What do you think we should be? You're talking, sorry, you just got to mute then. So were you talking about whether to choose a UG or a PG course? Is that what you're saying? Sorry, yeah, the in last India, bit of it you went on mute, so I didn't hear. What you I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, so in India, what we normally have heard counselors or moms and dads mentioning to their kids is you're too young to start a UG degree and you should probably uh, so ch chicken and egg because I think we're always confused that yes you want to study in the UK yes I want to study in Kiel but when should I go to Kiel yeah so it pretty much does depend on, on on your preferences but either way it doesn't matter so if you uh if you feel you're ready like from high school and you're ready to for that adventure, then yeah, go for the UG. And what if you do come for the UG, what that does as well is help you um, adjust. So then if you do go on to do the masters, you already had three years of doing the UG and you get used to the UK way of studying. So then when you come to do your masters, you're well, well prepared. Um, so I, I think it just depends on your personality, the type of person that the student is, whether they can take that adventure at a young age. Some students, um, maybe because of cost or whatever, they, they don't want to leave India just yet. They do the UG. Then again, we will welcome you to do your master's uh, program. So it, I think it just depends on the student profile and the type of student um, that you are. If you're so some students are very shy and reserved at 18 and maybe not want to leave home yet or maybe want to leave the leave India or whichever country they're in. So I think it very much depends on the actual student. Um, but either way, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really, um, you know, when you come in to find a job in the UK, either one of them, is, there's no detrimental effects at all, whether you've studied your UG here or you haven't. It, it still doesn't matter. You still even equal uh, consideration in terms of jobs. So an opportunity. They start early and they start with the UG degrees early. They're, they are still going to be exposed to as many chances of jobs yeah. as would have had they been doing their PG degrees. I think one of the points that I'd love to add here is if you're looking at a life in the UK and you're looking to build your career in the UK, I think the earlier you start, the better it is. I think studying abroad itself gives you a lot of maturity. I think with the additional year of advanced credits in India, you actually ease yourself with the grueling, rigorous academia culture that the UK has because the cu curriculum is mapped to what Kiel University has to offer you in the first year. So I think it gives you a good picture of how, how many assignments, how much experience, true component is going to be there, um, how, is, how are studies balanced. Uh, 
that and I think you have additional one year of academic readiness outside school where you know there's no option but to grow up. There's no option but to develop that um, ex extrovertness. And I think uh, students learn more when they're put in scenarios where they have no choice, right? But to learn. And I think part-time work gives you a lot of that benefit. I think uh, Jackie was very instrumental in, in, in mentioning to us that you can always accelerate your curve. So if even if you start early, you're going to get exposed to the similar opportunities, similar pay scale, similar you know uh, experiential chances, and ensuring that you have a great life in the UK. So why to 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 stretch your higher uh, higher education plans abroad by that far when you're going to be getting the same chances, even if you start right away? Yes, Jackie. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think, yeah, if you, if you do come at the undergraduate level, yes, you do, you do get that extra three years of settling into the UK. Because the, the way, because the way we, we, we teach is a lot different than how you are taught in India. So you, you've got that time to adjust to all of that. But then by the time we, you can get to do your master's, you're already equipped with all of those skills already. So that is one of the advantages of coming um, earlier to your UG. Uh, thank you so much, Jackie. We loved having you over. Uh, we're, we're, we're going to be recording this, putting it down on a YouTube library. And also we sent a recording to everybody who registered for the webinar, I'm sure. So you and I are going to be reaching a lot more numbers. Oh, wow. <laughs> We, we had about 205 registered students, so I'm sure we're going to be sending them. Anybody who's got any questions for me, please feel free to send me an email. I will put my email down in the Q&A button. Um, the chat button, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Put that down in the chat button. Wishing you guys all the best. Thanks, Jackie. I love Thank you. Thanks, everybody. You, uh, you all have a great evening ahead. Thank you.